Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Cheap, Tasty and Filling with me, Richard. It's a quick one this week. I'm making pita breads. Now, I did an experiment and tried these out and I was really impressed. We had them for lunch. They were delicious with hummus and a salad. And I thought, gosh, this is really, really easy to do. Inexpensive and a super quick way of putting together some bread to have with a meal. So I've got to bring it to you. I've got to show you how to do it. And the great thing is, it's only like two ingredients, three if you include the salt. I mean, this is one of the simplest ways of cooking bread. And I guess it's one of those breads that lots of different cultures make on a regular basis as part of their daily routine. You know, I'm, I'm usually speaking to colleagues and they always seem to mention that they're making their chapatis for the evening. Um, it's not really something that we Brits seem to do. Um, we just seem to buy our bread rather than make it. Obviously, I've got a bread maker. I make my own loaves. But people in general seem to just go out and buy shop board. This is so quick. I think everybody should give it a go. Don't buy your pitters. Make your own. So simple, so easy and delicious too. So have a look, join me in the kitchen now. I guess this is probably the simplest bread you can make. For this version of pita breads, it is the simplest because I'm not using any yeast, I'm just using flour. I'm not using any baking powder either. Stovetop version, so in here, I've got 100 grams of wholemeal bread flour and 50 grams of plain flour. I've got some water in a jug. I've got some flour for rolling out, wooden spoon for starting the dough off, rolling pin. I've got a clean tea towel, which I'm going to wrap the cooked pitters in to keep them soft. And I've got a, actually, this is a broken spatula, but it's ideal for flipping things over that are quite small. And I've got my trusty tea fowl. Your pan needs to be really, really hot to do these and no oil is required. And also this spatula is good because it can be used to press things down, which is what we need to do. So, you know, traditional pitters have got a pocket. These can have a pocket, depends on what mood they're in, frankly. So we're hoping for a pocket, but because you're not using any kind of leavening agent, no, no um, rising agents, um, you're relying on the steam that's created within the dough as it's cooking on a very high heat to, to force open a pocket. Hey, I can't guarantee that, but it is the simplest bread you can possibly make and probably the quickest only requires a little bit of resting time, maybe five, ten minutes. Let's get on with making this very simple dough. There's a little bit of salt in there as well. So it's actually only three ingredients, flour, salt and water. So I mentioned the amount of flour, but in terms of the amount of water, I've got very little idea. You want to end up with a, a sort of dough that isn't sticky, but is not too dry but is maybe sort of slightly tacky to the touch. So let's mix the flour together first. Let's put a bit of water in. Just mix it. We're going to do this until it starts to look really sort of messy and ragged. You can see it's still looking very dry, but you can tell that bits are starting to come together, but it looks a little bit messy, but that's okay. Try and combine all of those dry bits. That's good. Add a bit more water. 
don't add too much water although if you do you can always add a little bit more flour try and bring those dry bits in And you can sort of tell now that it's, it's sort of starting to stick together and most of the dry ingredients have sort of been taken up. So I think it's now time to go in with our hands. Hands are clean, feels very sticky. Don't worry about that at the moment. Put your spoon to one side. start squeezing it together. It feels quite sticky but don't be afraid. You see it's coming together. Now we need this dough to be quite elastic so we're going to start kneading it. sort of squeezing it and pressing it. It feels slightly sticky. You'll find that as you work it, it sort of feels smoother as you're working it. I find it easier to knead in the bowl, as you've seen me do before. We want this to be quite elastic. And what I mean by that is, when we press it, you can kind of see it move needs a little bit more work. And this is really the only the only hard work you're going to be doing with this because the rest of it, believe me, is so easy. I was kind of quite shocked when I made these. I did a couple of test runs and it was the first time that I'd made pita breads. Um, and I was kind of a bit stunned at how easy it was to do. Um, and we did have pockets as well. And it was, it was a pure experiment to begin with. I, I wanted to make them for a while. I did it, just made a dough like this, simple dough, and thought, how hard can it be? And uh, yeah, it worked really well. How's that looking? Yeah, I think it's okay. It does feel a little stickier now. It doesn't feel as smooth as I'd like it to be, but... It should be enough. Don't be afraid to add a little bit more flour and to work it in. feeling much better. I can actually press it and work it now. Yeah, that's feeling a lot better. I mean, you know, uh, I guess some of this is intuitive, although I'm not a bread maker or a pastry chef, you know that. Oh, that feels a lot better. Yeah, it's tacky now rather than sticky. It was getting too sticky before. I'm going to let that sit for about five minutes with a tea towel over it. And then we'll make the pitters. Okay, so the dough has been resting for about five minutes. And it's time to roll it out. So I've got a floured board. We need to divide this. I'm going to divide it roughly into four pieces. I think that will be fine. I'm going to make one into a ball. 
and roll it out. Now the trick is to roll it quite thin if you want a pocket to be creative and that is what my research has told me. So I've got the gas on full. It needs to be really hot. I've also got my tea towel ready because once they're cooked, they need to be wrapped in the tea towel to keep them soft. So we're going to put them into the pan with the rolled side down and the flour side up. And I'll show you what happens. We do need to flip them a few times. So I do have my spatula here which is actually a broken spatula but it's handy for flipping we really need to make sure this pan is good and hot like really hot i've actually turned the heat down to sort of medium now because the indicator in the center is telling me that the pan is now ready for cooking so we sort of maintain that sort of medium hot heat and let's pop them in When they've been in there for about, I don't know, about a minute or so, flip them over. Give them a good press down they make good contact with the pan. And again, after about a minute or so, you can flip them again. this stage when they're starting to get really hot you can notice that they will start to puff up there we go you can see it in action isn't that marvelous This one hasn't, because it's not got hot enough yet. Here it comes, this one. The 
That's great. flipped it over which has encouraged it to puff up there we are perfect another flip and they've all puffed up look at that look at that it's like a miracle No yeast, no baking powder, just dough. Now they're ready. What we need to do is pop them into the tea towel at the back. And wrap them up. do our final one. So hope we have the same success. This is why you need to be careful when you're looking on the internet and you're researching recipes. You will read things like, if you don't use yeast, they're not going to puff up. You won't get a pocket. Uh, if you don't use baking soda, blah, blah, blah. This won't happen. That won't happen. And all these recipes are, are encouraging you to use baking soda, yogurt, um, egg in some of them, you know, no, you don't need to. This is the simplest recipe. They will puff up. Now remember you're flipping after about a minute. You can see this one starting to puff up now. Lovely. And the other side's puffing up. miracle marvelous like a little pillow amazing they're amazing I love them okay I think that's done into the tea towel. So there we have four small pitters all wrapped up in the tea towel, feeling lovely and warm. And you can see that they are actually quite soft and they look just like the real thing. I mean, that's, I, I just think they're amazing. Let's tear one open, shall we? Oh, it's still hot. We've got a pocket. We've 
you've got a pocket. Delicious and easy to do. Perfect. I'll keep them wrapped up. So Paul, Paul, try my pitters. Now we've toasted them because I, this is the day after and I put them in the freezer to keep them as fresh as possible, but we've toasted them. Ooh. So they're a little bit crisp and hot now, but still- Nice and hot. But still with a pocket. We're having a bowl of soup. I'm having some hummus. I'm having some cream cheese and yeast extract. And it's just a light lunch. We've just been filming Sunday Chat. Sunday Chat! So if you're new to our channel, that's our weekly show, Sunday Chat. Don't say it again, Paul. So, Paul, what do you think of my... Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love them. I think they're great. They were soft yesterday, really soft. Mm. I think they work incredibly well. How long does it take to make? Minutes. Great for a sandwich, great with soup. Great with hummus. Great with marmite and cheese. A little overdone there. I think they're really good. I think there's some cheap bread that can be made with basic ingredients. I think it's ideal. Mm. Very happy. Anybody can make them. You don't have to be a skilled cook. Well, you made them, didn't you? Mmm, delicious. Thank you for watching. And definitely do give these a go. Happy cooking. Well worth it. Take care. Happy eating if somebody mm. else is doing the cooking. Happy cooking and eating. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.